So now that we've seen a kind of precy of vectors, let's move on and talk about vector operations. Before I begin explicitly with vector operations, let's just detail for a moment why vectors are useful in the context of building mathematical models. Most often for students, vectors are commonly encountered, if not in a math class, in a physics or engineering class. Let me just give you an example of vectors and how they would model real-world phenomena. One such way would be if, let's say I have a mass, okay, just in a physical sense, we're going to sort of look at an example here. I've got a mass, and I can talk about, let's say, that mass is resting uh, on a surface, a table, or, or what have you, or the ground. And I can talk about the forces kind of acting on this mass, in a sense. Now, in one sense, of course, there always is the presence of gravity. So we can say the force due to gravity, which is, of course, pulling this mass downward, right, toward the, the surface of the Earth. Now that force I can describe, again, as a vector. So I might call this just F with an arrow over it, using our notation from just a moment ago. And the direction, remember, a vector has direction and magnitude. Now the direction of that particular force due to gravity would be going downward toward the surface of the Earth. And I could draw the length or the magnitude of that vector to also express the magnitude of the force, and that's typically described in units such as newtons in physics and whatnot. Also, let's make this picture a little more interesting. Um, I could talk about maybe there's another force over here. Let's call this uh, force, I'll just denote the vector v uh, here. And let's say there is a, maybe a person pulling the mass using a rope, and so there might be this force displacing the mass to the right. We could then ask a question, well, what's the total forces acting on the mass? Well, to answer a question like that, we need to impose some basic arithmetical or uh, algebraic operations involving vectors. So what might it mean to add those vectors together? Well, that would be asking the question, what's the total force being applied to this mass or this object? So let's talk about vector operations then on the heels of that. Generally speaking, there are four prevalent uh, vector operations. In this little subunit here, I'm going to talk about uh, scalar multiplication and vector addition, and then we'll get to the other two uh, vector operations in short order. So let's walk through these here. With each of these operations, I'm going to explain them, and it's important to see this in two lights, in both a geometric and an algebraic sense. Okay, so the first such operation is called scalar multiplication. And let's first talk about, well, what a scalar is. A scalar is just, for us here, a number, let's say a real number. So I'll denote that with a C. And of course, we know a vector is a, an entity that has dimension. So we'll say our vector, for instance, lives in R2. So with scalar multiplication, what you do is you operate on a scalar and a vector together. It's a binary operation. And it's typically written like this. Okay, I'll just give you the notation. And just to be complete, let's say our vector consists of, once again, components A and B in that order. So we denote scalar multiplication uh, by adjacency here. So I just, in other words, write the scalar next to the vector. I don't put a dot or any multiplication symbol between it typically. And let's sort of expand this notation. So that's saying C multiplied by the vector described um, component-wise as A comma B. Well, the definition, the algebraic definition of scalar multiplication says you just distribute the scalar across each component of the vector. So in other words, I'd have C times A comma C times B. There is the algebraic definition of scalar multiplication. Let's do that with a simple example then. So for instance, if I have the scalar, let's say 2 times the vector 1 comma 3, once again, I distribute the 2 across the components of the vector. Pretty simple arithmetic here, right? So I just go 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. There is my new vector known as the resultant vector of that scalar multiplication. Now we should ask, well, what does that mean geometrically? In a nutshell, when you perform scalar multiplication, it scales, as the name would imply, the vector. So it's going to change the magnitude, but not the direction, importantly, of the vector. So let's draw a picture of kind of what's happening here. So geometrically speaking, 
we'll say we start with our vector v, okay? So I'll just call this vector v in our example. One, three, so meaning, again, the weight along our x-axis is one. The weight or the component value along our y-axis is three. So I'll draw this vector in standard position emanating from the origin. There is the vector v, okay? So what does it mean to scale that vector by two? Well, what happened here is we, once again, maintained the direction of the original vector, but we've multiplied the length or the magnitude of that vector by two. So I'll do my best to kind of draw this to scale in a sense. But here would be now in blue, the vector two V. Notice it's twice the length of the original vector, but maintaining the same direction. In other words, there's still that angle theta that hasn't changed. So if I multiply by two, I stretch the, the original vector by a factor of two. On the other hand, if I multiply the vector by scalar value one half, it would half the length of the vector and still maintain the same direction. What happens if I multiply a vector by, let's say, a negative scalar value? Again, we'll use our same vector example. Well, algebraically, I distribute that scalar across the components. And what do I have here? I have the exact same vector, that original vector, now just pointing in the opposite direction. So once again, if there's my vector v, negative v would just reflect through the origin and would point in the opposite direction. Similarly, if I multiplied by negative two, it would flip the orientation of the vector, so it would point in the opposite direction, but it would also scale it by value two. So this would be the vector negative two V.